Hi, this is uh, in continuation with the previous videos uh, to mention about the various equations uh, which are there in the uh, different chapters. Now we are in the unit magnetic effects and magnetism. So all the remaining units which are required for the first term examination uh, that has been covered in the previous videos. So now finally we have with the uh, chapter magnetic effects and magnetism. Uh, we back begin with Bayes-Savio's law, which says that uh, the magnetic field, that is, whenever there is a, a wire carrying current at a distance r, maybe at this point, the value of magnetic field is given by the equation B equals mu naught by 4 pi I dl sin theta by r squared. This is theta. Where dl is the current element, maybe this is dl of uh, the length dl. Uh, theta is the angle, you know, everything is uh, clear from this and mu zero is nothing but the permeability free space which is given by the equation 4 pi, sorry, which is given by the value 4 pi times to the power minus 7. This is uh, Bayes-Savio's law. Based on Bayes-Savio's law, we have an equation to uh, learn that is for the uh, magnetic field at a point on the axial line of a circular loop carrying current. This is a magnetic field uh, at this point, means this point is what is called axial line. Suppose this is of radius uh, r and uh, the distance is uh, small r from uh, the center to that point. This magnetic field is mu naught by r squared by 2 into r squared plus small r squared all raised to 3 by 2. It's equation for the magnetic field at a point on the axial line of a circular loop carrying current. And along with that we have one more equation that is magnetic field at the center okay center of the uh, loop uh, of radius r the equation is mu naught i by 2 r and also if it is a short uh, or small loop then the, there is if the radius is negligible then the equation would, would become mu 0 i by 2 small r cubed that is capital r is negligible compared to the small r means distance so uh, by savis law uh, the two equations related to that. Also, the, the right hand thumb rule is nothing but that comes along with this, which is to find out the direction of the magnetic field at a point due to a current carrying wire. See, actually, magnetic effects chapter has got four segments. First is bias Havs law and applications of that. The next is uh, Ampere Secutal Law. Ampere Secutal Law. So, ambient circuit law is applicable for current carrying uh, wires uh, and magnetic field around us. So, uh, the basic equation uh, about bias Havs law is integral BDL is mu naught I naught means I zero or I naught is the total current enclosed by the loop. Suppose you know so many uh, wires are there, then total current uh, enclosed by the loop is what is given by the equation by the uh, represented by the letter I zero. So, this is the statement of Ampere's circuit law. Ampere's circuit law leads to two other, uh, three other equations, three other cases. First one is the case of a magnetic field to long wire carrying current, infinitely long wire carrying current. At this point, how much is the magnetic field? That value is B equals mu naught I by 2 pi R, this equation for the magnetic field at a point due to an infinitely long wire carrying current. Now, another one is this, the long uh, solenoid, okay, sorry, long solenoid, uh, that is uh, infinitely, it is not of finite length, infinitely long solenoid, but the quantity associated with this is small letter n, which represents the number of turns per unit length of the solenoid carrying current, i is the current. So, the equation for the magnetic field uh, inside the solenoid is B equals mu naught n i. This is the expression for the magnetic field inside a solenoid. You know, uh, related to this one more thing to know is if it is a finite solenoid at this end, okay, at one end of the long solenoid is uh, mu 0 n i by 2. Memorize this as well. And uh, finally, one more thing from ambient circuital law is the expression for the magnetic field to a uh, toroidal solenoid. So, ambient circuit law, then application to find the magnetic field to a straight long wire carrying current, then straight long solenoid, then toroidal solenoid. 
toroidal solenoid means like this you know this one toroidal solenoid of average radius uh, small r then there again the equation for the magnetic field is mu0 n i where again small letter n is the number of turns per unit length so if you call if you take small capital n as the total number of turns and 2 pi r is the circumference then small n is this one for a toroidal solenoid another concept is about the the moving charge that is force on a moving charge we know the equation f equals q v b sin theta memorize this equation equation for the magnetic uh, force acting on a moving charge in a magnetic field at an angle theta so there are different cases if suppose this is the magnetic field and the uh, direction of magnetic field is like this and the charged particle is moving parallel to this then the force would be zero so the the trajectory of the charged particle will be straight line whereas if the if the angle is 90 that is if the charged particle is moving perpendicular to it okay this is how the charged particle is moving this is the magnetic field then the force is maximum which is qvb and that force will be completely utilized to provide the uh, centripetal force for it to move in a circular path you know that equation for the force is q into in vector form we can write like this b cross b cross product property says that you know the the force is always perpendicular to the velocity so force is perpendicular velocity in other words means uh, it will go in a circular path so if it is in a circular path the the value of the force required for the movement of uh, the particle in circular path is called centripetal force which is given by f is equal to mv squared by r here this in this case mv squared by r is given by qvb that is uh, provided by the magnetic force okay based on this we have the equation radius as uh, uh, like uh, we get an equation radius is mv by qb which can also be written as root of 2m into kinetic energy you know mv means momentum momentum and kinetic energy are related like this mv by qb so this is uh, one thing to know and continuation of this even we have the equation for frequency of revolution of charged particle you know when a charged particle is moving in a uh, perpendicular magnetic field it will go in a circular path if it is in a circular path the frequency of revolution is given by qb by 2 pi m and the reciprocal of that is called time period which is 2 pi m by qb so the charged particle two cases i said when it is moving parallel to the field second is moving perpendicular to the field perpendicular field to lead to the movement in circular path and in case if the charged particle is uh, moving in a magnetic field at uh, an arbitrary angle like maybe it is entering like this and it's making a, an angle theta with the field in this case it will have both the types of motion like it will go in circular path and even it will go in, uh, in straight line as well because the velocity has two components v cos theta uh, will make it move in a parallel parallel to the magnetic field which is uh, there is no net force due to v cos theta so uh, it will go in a straight line but this component v sin theta uh, being perpendicular to the magnetic field also it will, it will tend to move it and it will cause it to move in a circular path so both together combined effect is what is that it will go in a helical path this is the third case you know if the charged particle is ending at an angle theta it will go in a helical path helix uh, is characterized by its radius as well as this horizontal distance by the time it moves one complete circular path which is called pitch so pitch and the radius radius you know obviously q uh, the uh, we have seen the equation radius is mv by sin theta sorry mv by qb we said no so instead of mv we write mv sin theta why because v sin theta is what is making it move in a circular path and pitch is given by the equation pitch means horizontal distance traveled by the particle by the time it completes one revolution so the velocity is v cos theta horizontally into time period this is how we calculate pitch and one general point uh, we'll be very careful about is you know whenever a charged particle is moving in a perpendicular magnetic field or parallel magnetic field or even at an angle what happens is there may be a force there may not be as well if there is a force that force will be perpendicular velocity if it is perpendicular velocity it simply means there is no work done so be very clear <clears throat> in a magnetic field whichever way the way the charged particle is moving there is no work done by it so work done is zero Work done zero means what else in 11th standard you studied that work done is change in kinetic energy. If there is no work done, no change in kinetic energy. This is a very important point. So whenever a charged particle is moving in a magnetic field, there is no change in kinetic energy because work done is zero. 
because if there is a force if there is no force obviously work is not done if there is a force but that force is perpendicular to the magnetic field uh, sorry force is perpendicular to the velocity so there is no work done so there is no change in kinetic energy so i said about the force on a charged particle by a, a magnetic field and next is a force on a current carrying conductor on a current carrying conductor that is if a if a conductor is carrying a current uh, through it and displaced in a magnetic field then okay it is placed in a magnetic field then it will experience a force okay there is a force this is a uh, current carrying conductor if it is of length l that force is given by f is equal to b i l sin theta this is the force on a current carrying conductor when placed inside a uh, magnetic field at an angle theta this for the direction of this force is given by fleming's left hand rule fleming's left hand rule and this leads to another concept that is whenever two uh, conductors carry current okay separated by distance r then there is a force uh, between them uh, if they are if the currents are in the same direction there will be force of attraction if they are in opposite directions there will be force of repulsion that force per unit length is given by an equation mu0 i1 i2 by 2 pi r so uh, what you say the force on a current carrying conductor that is leading to another equation force per unit length between two parallel wires then you should think of the uh, same direction current attraction opposite direction current repulsion be clear on that as well okay that then uh, finally one more thing is that is whenever a current loop is placed inside a perpendicular magnetic field there will be a torque that is if suppose this is a current uh, loop okay placed inside a perpendicular magnetic field like this then the torque experience because you know there will be two equal opposite forces it will cause a torque the torque is given by uh, you know n i b a sin theta is the equation Obviously, this uh, IA is what is referred to as the dipole moment, magnetic dipole moment of a single loop. If there are n turns, it will be NIA. So, NIA can be taken as the dipole moment as a whole. So, we can even write it as MB sin theta, which is the usual equation. You know, you are familiar with PE sin theta, no? Same way. But here, M is small m is the dipole moment of the rectangular loop. So, whenever a current carrying loop is placed inside a perpendicular magnetic field, it will experience a torque given by the equation tau is equal to mb sin theta okay and this is what is made use of in what you call as moving coil galvanometer so in a moving coil galvanometer the principle is uh, what uh, nothing but uh, whenever a current carrying loop is placed in the magnetic field it will experience a torque okay there one equation to mem memorize this uh, uh, what you call as this uh, deflection is proportional to the deflection produced is proportional to the current flowing through it the more the current more is the deflection okay so there we have a term there are actually three terms to understand one is called uh, current sensitivity of the galvanometer current sensitivity so current sensitivity of the galvanometer is given by the equation nasi is equal to nba by k you can say n is number of turns of the uh, coil which is used in the galvanometer b is the magnetic field a is the area of the loop and k is called coupled per unit twist or torsion constant of the uh, fiber used uh, to suspend the coil torsion constant or we can sometimes this refer to a spring constant also then we call it as uh, we, the next term we have is voltage sensitivity voltage sensitivity is nothing but uh, how much of uh, whatever be the uh, deflection produced under the unit potential difference. By the way, current sensitivity defined as deflection per unit current. That is what is shown like this. When deflection per unit uh, potential difference or voltage, when you say instead of voltage, we can write even I. So, alpha by I is what is referred to as uh, current sensitivity. So, current sensitivity can also be referred to as uh, or expressed as SI by R. Sorry, voltage sensitivity can also be represented as current sensitivity divided by resistance. So, remember current sensitivity does not depend on resistance, but voltage sensitivity depends on resistance. That is one thing to know. Okay. And further, one more thing. There is one more term rather related to moving wheel galvanometer, which is uh, moving wheel galvanometer. The third term is what you call as figure of merit. Okay. Figure of merit is nothing but 
how much current is required to produce unit deflection current required to produce unit deflection in the galvanometer therefore it is nothing but the reciprocal of the current sensitivity okay so current sensitivity voltage sensitivity and figure of merit are the three terms associated with the moving well galvanometer you know it's a very sensitive device but you know the galvanometer uh, cannot directly be used as a meter or voltmeter but it can be converted by converting by connecting a very low resistance in series sorry in parallel called shunt resistance okay this as a whole will become a an ammeter the equations to remember one is the uh, expression for the uh, the shunt resistance should be connected to make convert it into a galvanometer uh, galvanometer into an ammeter so this is an ammeter two equations to remember ig into g by i plus sorry i minus ig okay ig is the current for uh, in a, uh, required for full deflection galvanometer uh, g is the resistance of the galvanometer i is the total current to be measured again ig is the current required for full deflection okay and also the effective resistance in an ammeter is given by you know obviously the two parallel combination resistors so we can get this g is the resistance of galvanometer but when you when you uh, want to convert a galvanometer into voltmeter you just need to connect a high resistance in series there are the two equations to remember v by ig minus g is the resistance to be connected to convert a galvanometer into a meter v is the total voltage to be measured in that case ig is the uh, total current required for full deflection of the galvanometer and again here also the effective resistance is nothing but the total resistance of the combination which is r plus g being in series combination so these are the ways a galvanometer can be converted in, uh, first into an ammeter next into a voltmeter you memorize these equations as i mentioned at the beginning we are the, oh, focusing only on the basic equations associated with these chapters finally we have the chapter magnetism okay under magnetism uh, for this term we just need to learn only a few things that is basically what earth's magnetism so under earth's magnetism terms to understand is one is about angle of declination which is the angle between the uh, magnetic meridian and geographic meridian and angle of dip which is the angle the magnetic field at any place makes with the horizontal at a, a place on the surface of the earth so we have the term bh horizontal component as b cos theta we resolve b means mag actual magnetic field of earth into two components b cos theta and b sin theta horizontal and vertical components b cos theta and b sin theta when you divide bv by bh is the sin theta by cos theta that is tan theta theta is the angle of dip dip angle okay mainly these are the uh, things related to earth's magnetism earth is a magnet because of the uh, molten materials you know the circulation of convection currents inside the mantle of the earth earth is a magnet and uh, the equations to memorize this bh bv and tan theta so typically a simple uh, one question like what's the angle of dip at the place where horizontal and vertical components are equal if the question comes horizontal and vertical components are equal means tan theta would be one so theta is 45 degree also remember that the pole the angle of dip is uh, 90 and at the equator the angle of dip is zero this is pole and this at the equator And if there is a place where the earth's magnetic field can get cancelled by the magnetic field to a magnet, that point is called a null point or a neutral point. That's again a concept to understand. Okay, I think uh, that's it. So, I just briefed you the basic equations coming in the chapters. So, dear students, uh, in view of the term 1 CBSC examinations, we have the chapters from electrostatics to alternating current circuits in physics. So my attempt was to brief you on the equations in all these chapters. I have made uh, four videos. First one related to electromagnetic induction and AC. Second one was of electrostatics, the first chapters, uh, first two chapters. Then we had uh, current electricity and now this is of magnetic effects and magnetism. This with this series of videos, uh, which is um, uh, to just briefly about 
only the basic equations that's it this, uh, this is up now what is uh, what we will do is we will be able to discuss some extra questions which are useful for the uh, examinations but my request to all of you is that all these videos revise quickly go through it and it will help you to go through the different equations associated with these chapters i hope it will be useful after learning these equations thoroughly so along with the video when you watch this video instead of uh, uh, passive watching go through it and uh, pause it wherever required and write down the equations and learn like that you know make use of it in a proper way rather than watching like a, it's not a movie you know okay right so all the very best for your ex for the for the coming examinations and hope all of you will be doing good and next video i'll be making for um, uh, explaining different questions okay and answers all right see you in the next video